You know security is hard, so let's assume We're probably gonna get pwned by noon But if we all start to get the basics right We might not fully get pwned until Thanks, thanks for uh, coming today. This is a presentation all about how to create kick butt credential capturing phishing portals. And uh, let's, not, let's not waste any time. Let's just dive right into it here. Um, we'll do some quick announcements. Uh, my buddy Paul from, from Idaho is on the line. We'll just uh, briefly introduce each other. I've got a couple short announcements and then we'll just, we'll just get right to the goods. Um, I'm Brian Johnson with 7-Minute Security, so I do the 7-Minute Security podcast at 7ms.us and then also have a business wing of 7-Minute Security at 7minutesecurity.com where I do pen testing and training and general security assessments and currently training to be a PCI professional. And with me is Paul Wilsch. Paul, thanks for being here. Hey everybody, this is Paul from uh, Boise, Idaho. I guess you can all see me, so it's different now. Um, yeah, I uh, run a um, cybersecurity group called Project 7, and I found out a couple years ago, and then I met Brian a couple years ago, just listened to his podcast, and somehow we managed to uh, be friends over the years, and everything's good. I've talked about you on the podcast before, Paul, as you were the guy who said, uh, after you listened to a bunch of my episodes, that you thought I would look more like Jared from Subway when we met. Yeah, and, <laughs> yeah uh, it, was, it was horrible. That's yeah. scarred every new relationship I've made since then, to be honest with you. Yeah, and it was really go, bad. I go, am I giving off a uncomfortable vibe? Am I making people and families and children nervous just by meeting me? I never know, but I, I assume yeah, the answer I is yes. I would always joke to my wife, I'm like, ah, Jared, he, that guy, you know, the subway Jared is really creepy and obviously a really bad guy. And then I just listened to all your pot binge, binge listening to your podcast as I was traveling. And it was like, Jared's my co-pilot, pilot, you know? And I'm like, it was horrible. Right? <laughs> Could have just Googled you, but I wasn't into that. You know, I'm like, man, just listen to this guy. Yeah. What if he looks, what if he looks worse than Jared, you know? Okay. I'm going to take that, that it could have been, <laughs> it could have been worse. You could have looked worse than Jared. Yes. All right. There we go. All right. Um, just a couple of announcements. Uh, I love doing these uh, webinars. And again, Paul, thanks for being part of this one. Um, 7ms.us slash webinars is where the whole archive is. So you'll see I highlighted at the uh, bottom right of the screen there. I finally, whenever I do a new webinar, it makes me panic and go, I never got the YouTube version of the last one we did oh. up online. So what you're seeing circled is the YouTube link to the Ponagochi, the DIY Ponagochi webinar we did a month-ish ago. So that was a really fun one where we did a, uh, well, we did a virtual capture the flag exercise. So at the end of the Ponagochi presentation, which do I have my Ponagochis? No, they're at home too. Mm. I gave folks a handshake capture file and they, you know, scrambled off to their virtual corners of the world trying to crack it. And then uh, I think it was like three or four hours later, somebody, you know, tweeted me, got it, got the password, and we gave them a gift nice. card. So that, that webinar got really good feedback, and I'm trying to figure out more things that we can do like that, especially during this stay-at-home time, which I don't know if it's going to let up anytime soon. Um, if, if maybe like an interactive, um, we hack the juice shop together or something like can that. We like an extended workshop, like a four hour one or something, you know, that would be cool. That would be cool. And by the way, speaking of that, uh, the, the black Hills information security folks, uh, they've, they've been offering so much content for free. I went on, um, Saturday, I think they had like a four or five hour free threat hunting webinar workshop. Um, that's nice. awesome. I think this Saturday is another one with Bo Bolock on, I think it's all about breaching the perimeter, like doing external pen tests and kind of soup to nuts, how, how they do those. So, God bless those folks. They're just and, and anybody who's just offering so much cool stuff for yeah. right now. I mean, that's wonderful. Um, and uh, also, this webinar is brought to you by LightPenTest.com, Paul. For all your uh, light pen testing needs, just go to LightPenTest.com. <laughs> it's a managed vulnerability scanning and pen testing service uh, by Seven Minute Security, and it's uh, fully remote. Nice. So, COVID or not, uh, we can make this work for your environment. And that's all I like to 
that's that's the experience. well let's go into it real quick so what happens okay. if i'm a customer i go to your website lightpentest.com yeah uh, and i actually have not been there but uh so, <laughs> so okay. you go there and then uh well i know the behinds because we talked about it before but you know you go there i click yes i want a uh, vulnerability test then what yeah so what i'm trying to do is formal uh, i've formalized into a service something that i've been doing informally for a lot of clients which is they've offloaded their regular vulnerability scanning responsibilities to me. So I ship them out a little uh, box, a little a little NUC uh, with tools and Nessus and all that stuff loaded on it. I take care of their internal vulnerability scans. And from here, I take care of their externals, write them regular reports, um, do a quarterly security meeting with them to kind of say, hey, I, I, you know, here's the raw dump. Yes, but I've, I've sliced and diced that down into something that's a little bit more actionable. And here are the five, the 10, the 15 things that I would prioritize over these you know, jillions of findings. Um, and so it's a, it's, it's a thing that's priced yearly. We can customize the heck out of it, but uh, I try to offer it at a flat yearly price, which also includes one full network pen test. So, you know, let's say you signed up in January, we do a bunch of vulnerability scans. We really start to tighten up the environment. Then for a week out of that year, maybe towards the end of the year, I put on my bad guy hat and look at your network from the point of somebody who got physical access or maybe fished you, right, Paul, and got a hook into your internal network. And now I look at it from what can I do now? You know, what what other low hanging fruit is out here? You know, maybe you've really um, due to the vulnerability scans, you've been aggressive about patching things and that side of the house is pretty tight. But what else? Are there insecure network protocols you're using? Are there default username and passwords? Are there, uh, you know, other exploits up, up uh, you know, bad guy's sleeves that they could use? Um, and then we, we kind of start baking that into your overall network health plan as well. So, uh, yeah. So nice. just, and then just overall, saying. it's just the PC. It's like this big. I mean, it's a really small footprint PC. I was going to try yeah. to – I have my workstation PC, but I didn't want to lift that up and destroy yeah, anything. But I was exactly. trying to find something that's – it's I have smaller than a tablet, yeah. Flip yeah, I, tablet, I don't know so, if yeah. you can see the the, the little uh, the little nucks here. Yeah, they are really only about, you know, that big. So um, customers tend to really like that because they don't have to pay, especially when it's uh, something. If I'm coming out quarterly to do scans, you know, there's no travel costs, hotel flight, none of that. I mean, I can just ship it. It can be ready to just plug in, power up in your environment. There's some things we do ahead of time to kind of configure remote access, but. Almost every time it's just a uh, cool. We just throw it in some corner of the server room. You don't have to see, you know, my ugly face. Uh, we can do almost all of it remotely and let you get back to whatever your job is and doing your work and making money for the business. Oh, that was cool. You told me about a story where uh, one of your customers had put a sticker over the top of it and put uh, like installed in 2007. You know, contact me uh, for <laughs> removal. You know, me, and it just said M E. You didn't know who to contact, so I thought that was a great idea because then, you know, if somebody found that and it's dusty and old and in there, it says, you know, install 2007. Well, it's still there, so if somebody just wasn't sure, they didn't know who to contact, right? So they were going to leave it in there oh, for yeah. a little bit longer. I thought that was a good idea. Oh, yeah, yeah. I guess that's that's a purpose I didn't even think of where this could be handy is if you, if you want to, you know, if you're doing a red team, blue team kind of thing and you want to play what's plugged into our network that's doing and map scans and other noisy things. Yeah. Uh, this would certainly be a, you know, kind of a benign way to do that too. So. All right. Nice. Good luck. Oh, hey, thanks man. And thanks for, you know, giving me an opportunity to talk about it just like we rehearsed it really well. <laughs> yeah, I think exactly. really like <laughs> yeah. All right. So uh, this, this has become building a, a credential capturing portal has become uh, one of my favorite things uh, because it's fun. That's like the main driver, I think, to share with you uh, what I've been doing with these, uh, because I just think they're I just think they're a blast. And what I hope you'll see in this short time we have together is that um, this is something you can do without a lot of money. I think, besides maybe a little Amazon Web Services time and the cost of a domain, that's and and yeah, some of your time. This is a pretty cheap exercise to do. I'd say it's um, relatively easy. I know that. You know, we're going to cover a lot of ground today. You're not going to be able to probably sit right next to this presentation with your machine and just, you know, match me and, and get everything up and running. But that's why we put everything up on YouTube, too. Um, these exercises are really effective. So since I've been doing these for about the last uh, year, maybe year and a half, um, you know, always get get good, good results uh, from them. And, you know, it can be used for both offensive and defensive purposes. So, 
you know, maybe you've, you've got no before, you've got some other service in your, uh, you know, it's so commoditized now, right? These, these uh, services that'll do fishing exercises for you. And I think they're, they're great and they still have a lot of value, but it's nice when you can kind of, um, you know, really own it and make it your own and fully uh, adjust everything to, to, to uh, fit your business's needs. I see a lot of them are, you know, very templatized, which is fine because they offer such a big variety of templates, but, but this approach, I think, really gives you all the control to, to, to make it your own. I think it's um, good, too, because then you can really get to know what, what it takes to do one and, yeah. and appreciate it, you know. So later on, if you went to uh, another company, know before maybe, uh, then you, you could understand what they're doing. Or if you learn it and you, you can do it and you're like, well, this isn't so bad. Why would I pay another company when you can do it yourself? So I think it's just, yeah. you know, more information, the more you learn. And it's, it is, I think it would be fun to learn. I haven't done this, obviously, yet. But uh, you told me about it, and it sounds pretty awesome. Yeah. So I'll, I'll just show you when, when I'm when I'm going to do a fishing exercise for a customer. I'll I'll use myself as the as the the target for today. And let's just say, you know, I've hired some organization to do a, a fishing exercise against me. Uh, one of the first things that that I would do is look for a good domain to to fish with. And there's lots of different ways you can do this, but one of the most common ways is to try to find a domain that's available for purchase that just has a slight character change. That's one of my favorite things to do. So in this case, maybe you decide to scoop up 7ns.us because mm. when you send your emails from, you know, Paul at 7ns, or if you're impersonating me, Brian at 7ns.us, your hope is whoever gets those emails is just, you know, they're, they're glossing over that with their eyeball and just going, oh yeah, I'll click whatever this is or I'll install whatever this is. Um, or, uh, look for the same hmm. uh, primary domain, but with uh, an alternate ending. That's a really uh, popular uh, thing to do, uh, too. Um, the, the, the problem that I've run into more and more is that these technical controls that people have in their perimeter are getting better and better at sniffing out fishy domains. So when they get, a, when they get an inbound email from, let's say, uh, you know, 7ns.us, one of the criteria they look at is, okay, uh, how new is this domain? Oh, it was just registered 47 minutes ago. Hmm. Okay, we're going to add that to our reasons we don't trust this email. And if then if there are other factors, it could end up with that email being tucked away in the spam folder, and then you've kind of lost some of the punch of your um, campaign. And I, you know, I, I know folks are kind of mixed about this. I, I personally have no problem working with a client to to say, let's let's whitelist this domain in your perimeter controls so that at least it it lands in people's inboxes because really what we're after is we're after testing the people, not your technical controls, unless that's what you want. And then in this case, okay, your tech controls win, but don't you want to see yeah. what people do when they're faced with a very convincing uh, phishing email? And so um, a, a, a mutual buddy of ours, uh, Paul, Joe, um, taught me about this site uh, about a year ago, um, expireddomains.net. And as the name implies, it's a nice little search engine for domains that, you know, have, have been around a while. They have somewhat of a reputation, uh, but they've been expired for a period of time. Um, so as we look at this list, one that jumps out, yeah, that's nice. Uh, to me, yeah, 7ms.io. So it's expired. I don't think I have in the screenshot where uh, how long this this uh, um, particular domain has been around, but um, it did some checks on it. It it wasn't known to be a you know it didn't have a bad reputation around the web, but it had what it had going for it was age. You know, it's been it's been some places. It's talked to a few people. Yeah. You know, it's seen the sites. So I uh, so so I scooped that domain up. Um, and let's see. And will you maybe just take a look to, or just to, if you see, whoops, if you see questions or uh, things come in, will you just let me know? And sure. Yeah. Uh, we can pause. Um, so I scoop up that that domain. Um, so that's you know anywhere from whatever ten to fifty to. I mean, some of those those domain extensions are getting crazy expensive. I never buy the ones that are big pricey. I kind of stick to you know .dot net .dot org .dot us. Um, and uh, once you've got the domain purchased, then you, you, you want to get some space in the cloud. I'm going to use Amazon in today's example, but you want to get some space, some VM running in the cloud that you're going to set your phishing server 
uh, on. So uh, I kind of like right in the um, right in the Amazon store there, the the marketplace is a, a Kali Linux VM you can deploy, and it is eligible for the free tier. Which uh, the way I'm understanding that, at least according to the documentation, is that hmm. you get uh, 750 hours free a month and for me like most of my campaigns don't even last 750 hours so this is fine for me um so you know but whatever if you prefer digital ocean or something else doesn't doesn't really so, matter yeah just for the first year or you know like your first you know email you get you get it for first year or is it just free i think so seven how many hours are in a month is that uh is that basically giving you some getting started time and and then you maybe roll i think it's that you then roll into and maybe somebody can type it in the chat mm. maybe you roll into it starting to charge you after a, a free month or two or something mm. but i i honestly i haven't i haven't really had to even deal with the building because i i i'll have these up for maybe two weeks and then i just pop them down um, oh i mean i mean so you get the free tier 750 but then i mean is it does it just you just get free hours that's it I think so. I will have that's, to. That's a lot. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, so, we'll have yeah. to defer defer to our uh, friends online. Maybe they can chime in here. We can talk about that. Hmm. Um, Joe, real quick, oh. Joe said free tiers forever, up to seven fifty for, uh, per month. Oh, okay. That's good. Sweet. Thanks, Joe. Yeah, thanks, Joe. All right. So you'll you'll provision that server. You will get a. Uh, you'll create a, a you know SSH. Uh, key set. And by the way, Paul, if you were going to go nuts right now and try to hack into that box, I don't have it anymore. So it's somebody else's IP. So <laughs> please just kind of, you know, curb your enthusiasm for a few right, moments. Yeah. Uh, but you'll SSH in and you will be ready to start setting up uh, your your phishing server. Um, it was also our pal Joe who, ta uh, who uh, pointed me towards this awesome, awesome free phishing platform called GoFish. And actually the... Um, the if you want it, the the proper kind of like full documentation site, um, I mean it is a GitHub project, but it is, and I just want to get the right domain so I don't send people to the wrong place. Getgofish.com, all one word or all one chunk. Get g o p h i s h dot com. Um, but what I've got here, this URL is for uh, the downloads, and so uh, from your Cali VM. All you really need to do, this is right from my terminal. Hmm. Uh, I just made myself a folder called GoFish. Uh, I went to the uh, uh, opt folder and I just pulled down the zip file. And what's so nice about this, because um, I'm pretty comfortable with Linux, but anytime it's like, well, now you got to make this and compile that and tar zip your mom and all that other stuff, <laughs> I just go, ah, I'm nervous I'm going to screw this up. What's so nice is that you unzip the GoFish zip into a folder and then there's one binary to run you just and you'll see it in a minute here but you run it and that's it there is some config we'll do behind the scenes but whenever you need to actually fire it up to run it's just you know run it take it down run it take it down um what i recommend people do first before launching GoFish and even having that kind of pop up on the web where you know bots and crawlers can can start scraping the content is make yourself in in the Amazon uh, network groups, or I can't remember exactly the terminology, but um, create yourself a, a set of rules to, to really lock this down for the time being to just be accepting connections from your home IP address. So kind of from top to bottom there, we're going to have a couple rule, uh, four rules. Mm -hmm. For port 80, that'll just be for people once they hit the you know phishing bait and hopefully click and send their passwords and all that good stuff uh, port 3333 that's for the admin interface uh, for creating the campaigns behind the scenes so we'll talk about this a little bit later but that one will I would recommend keep that uh, always only available from your home IP address because um, you know clients will be submitting passwords that are going to be stored on this back-end interface and you don't want oh. some bot coming along, hitting port 3333 and banging away, trying to, you know, brute force their way into your admin portal. Yeah. Um, and then port 443, because we're going we're gonna to really make this shine. We're going to throw a, SS, uh, a security cert on this phishing site before we're all done. And then uh, port 22 for SSH, SSHing in and doing all mm -hmm. the config. And that's another rule that will stay. I would recommend that it stay open only to your home or your... Um, Office IP address. Okay, so you make that make that chunk of rules, save that out, 
And then, like I said, you go into the GoFish folder, you type dot slash GoFish, do, 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 and all those lines you're seeing, that's that's it hmm. firing up. And it's it's like rip roar and ready to go right then. Um, so you will be able to immediately go to HTTPS colon slash slash your IP from Amazon or wherever you are, colon 3333. There's your admin interface. It does have a default username and password, so you want to make sure you, you know, get in there and uh, change that right away. So that default password, username and password, is that uh, is that randomly generated or is it a static one that's, you know, as far as you can tell on the install, it's always the same? If I remember right, it's always the same. Yeah, oh, I think okay. it's like get. I think it's like GoFish and admin or something like that. So right. there's another reason, like in that network group config, don't leave this open to anybody but yeah. yourself, you know. I'm just actually, it's like, okay, the probability that, you know, in the five seconds it takes you to start it up and come over here. Oh, no, I'm just thinking it. if, you know, misconfigurations, you know, I'm just yeah, thinking like yeah. somebody might get lazy and they're messing around and they fish their friends or something like that and they think it's funny, but they, they just don't know what they're doing or security-wise and they don't oh, yeah. change the username and password. So just wondering. Yep. yep. Good point. Yep. Change that password for sure. Um, and then once you get in the admin interface, kind of all these menus on the left is, is what we're going to step through at a high level uh, to uh, create our campaign. So it's got a, just a really slick, polished, you know, gooey to it. I mean, it, I remember when it first fired up, I immediately felt guilty. Like already I can tell this is something that I got to go support <laughs> his campaign or I don't know if he's got a SoundCloud or GoFundMe or something, but uh, it, it, it looks good and it is good. Um, so with that domain purchased, hmm. um, the, the, here's an area that, that can get a little bit tricky and a little bit sticky. And I I know a lot of pen testers I've worked in the pa with in the past, um, their next hurdle in this whole setup is getting, getting email, uh, you know, an email account that will go through that won't be flagged by various controls as, uh, you know, spam or malicious. And so... Personally, I like to, um, I, I have all my domains through Google domains and um, other other providers probably tie in with them as well. But what just makes it easy for me in my phishing workflow is that I register the domain and then it's just a couple clicks to say, yes, I want to add a G Suite uh, email address to this domain. And so, boom, I hit click get G Suite at the bottom there and walk through setting up uh, my admin account and and typically I make one and own I make one account to rule them all and that is going to be the person that I will be impersonating so often in my phishing campaigns I am pretending to be the head of IT or the he the head of security so in this case I'm gonna I'm putting myself as the target so I'm going to impersonate Brian Johnson by making my G Suite email be Brian at 7ms.io and oh, is that G Suite? Is that also free, or is that? Oh, there you go. Never mind. You just yeah. Next no, no. You got you got me covered. Yeah. You'll you'll be asked, uh, you know, to to choose one of the following. I just go with the basic, the six dollar a month plan. So I guess there's there's a little bit more money out of your pocket for this campaign, but uh, but it's a it's a one month investment, and then I yeah. I shut it down. But you know, still six bucks a month. Now uh, some people have asked, oh well, couldn't I do this with GoDaddy Popmail or Namecheap uh, hmm. XYZ Mail? Probably, I just have. I just tend to find that this is really easy. Because um, another thing I like to do when I um, when I set up, you know, when I impersonate an IT or security leader, is um, and, and we'll get to this. I'm kind of getting ahead of myself, but in the scripts for the campaign, I'll also tell people, uh, you know, click this bait, right? Click this link where I'm really trying to get them to give me their username and password, right. but also reply back to me and let me know if you were successful and. It's interesting oh. because a large percentage of people reply to fake Brian or fake Bob or whoever it is and will sometimes discuss things that are sensitive and should not be, you know, they, they're not, they don't realize they're talking to fake Brian, but they'll reply nice. and say, hey, we got to talk about this sensitive matter involving this person and that person. And I mean, I just, it makes my shoulders go up. Where I, go, <laughs> I got to tell him, I got to tell him, but I got to just wait. Yeah. You know, they said this would happen, but it's nice because you can, you know, really quickly, like I got the, you know, the Gmail app on my phone. It's just so nice to just add another account and put fake Brian in nice. there. And then yeah. just kind of, as I'm doing my work, ding. Oh, oh, somebody wrote fake Brian again. You know, it's nice. It's, yeah. Yeah. I, I'm sure you could get, you know, any number of, um, 
mail service. Well, also, I would think, you know, that pop mail, I don't know about how secure that is, but Gmail is, I would say, hopefully more secure. You know, they're big, so they're going to have a little bit better services and security. Um, also on this, can you create multiple aliases? Like if you want to have a team of people, right, like a help desk, can you do aliases? Like one account with multiple aliases. I think I think you can. I, I haven't for these before, hmm. but in, on a domain that I own, I, I believe I paid for just one account but gave it several nicknames. I don't think they charge you if it's just all, all yeah. uh, uh, you know, roads leading to one place. Um, so yeah, so I just, take, I just take the basic plan that works pretty well. And then to your point about security, Paul, there are a couple things you need to kind of tweak on the admin side. So it got cut off a bit here, but I'm in the Google admin portal. Um, and if you just search for, I think, less secure, some of the things that will come up are in this menu and you need to go into uh, less secure apps because by default um, a new Google Apps account won't let you just plug in the username and password and SMTP address and just send mail out. You kind of have to uh, intentionally opt in to that. Um, I don't know when they made that change, but I think I found that out the hard way after banging my head against a wall going, why won't these mails <laughs> go, mm, yeah. go through? They just, they're, they're acting like the password's bad and I know they're not. Um, so, so you'll come in and you'll, you'll, you'll first, uh, the top screen is you as an admin saying, I'm going to allow users to manage the security of their mail profile. And then the bottom account is, the, is actually in the settings of that Brian at 7ms.io account, where I as the account owner also come in and I turn less secure apps on. So kind of a two-parter, right? The admin of the G apps domain says i'm going to allow people to choose to be less secure and then at yeah. the account level you come in and turn it on and i think i also punched myself in the head on an engagement <laughs> on that because i did one and not the other so i'm going to probably come back and watch this a few times to be honest with you because i always forget there are these two <laughs> settings but i think this captures it um okay so then back in your gofish web admin portion, you will create an email profile. So at this point, like on the left side, you should be able to say, you know, here's my profile. It's called totally not Brian. It's going to be from Brian at 7ms.io. There's G uh, Gmail's SMTP address, type in the username and password. And then there's a nice uh, test email feature. And then on the right, there, there's your, there's your test message just to let you know yeah. everything's on the up and up. Nice. And that's also a good, um, place i think when i have bought old domains that got flagged um like i i will sometimes on campaigns send this to my contact at a client who's helping me coordinate it just to go hey did this make it into your uh inbox or did it get dumped in uh spam so this kind of helps us know a little bit ahead of time whether or not we're going to be successful in getting in front of people's eyeballs and you've had a higher success rate um with these domains, I can't remember the one that, that uh, Joe, bought, that you bought from them, these uh, ones that aren't old, or the ones that are old, the, yeah, the uh, success rate is better? More success rate with the ones Joe pointed me to, to buy the aged seasoned domains. Okay. Yeah, yep. They just seem to plop happily in the, in the inbox for the most part. Nice. Um, okay, so we've got a domain. We've got infrastructure stood up. We've got our, our email sending account. Um, now we kind of want to find our, our hook, or what is our... What is our campaign actually going to look like? And so um, I, I'm, I'm showing a, um, an example, a 7MS branded example of, of something I see pretty typically at client sites, which is they might have a SharePoint or some software portal dot their domain dot com that um, opens up some sort of single sign in or says, hey, I'm about to connect you into Office 365, log in with your Office 365 creds here. And it kind of looks like uh, this screen. And so what I try to do on my fake 7ms.io phishing site oh. is emulate the look and feel of that as much as, uh, as, much as I can. Um, just kind of getting that whole uh, HTML written is maybe a little bit too much to go into on this, this webinar. But um, episode 384 of the 7ms podcast, I went into it quite a bit and also have in the show notes for that episode um, code that you can just copy and paste um, to make your own login form that will capture passwords. So 
I'm not good with HTML. I'm dangerous enough to make a login form and maybe a nice company logo. Um, and so if you follow my template, I think you'll, you know, you'll have success in, in mimicking the look and, and feel. I mean, if it's a something really complicated, you know, it's, it's, you, you can spend a lot of time here, but the I nice see. part is like, you know, once it's, once it's done. And, and actually for me, like as someone who likes just doodling and, and, you know, not any graphic designer by any means, but when you get something that, that side by side and two monitors really <laughs> yeah. looks like what they're used to seeing, there's just kind of an evil glee that washes over. So, <laughs> so, uh, so there's no, there's no real gooey or that looked kind of like a, right there. What is that? Yeah. So this is just the raw HTML code that is, that is, that is going to make the, the, you know, make the GUI. This is just the code behind the site. So what I'm just okay. offering here is you could copy paste that, tune it to mimic the page you're trying to emulate. Uh, and then you end up, you know, you'll, you'll paste that into the admin portal of GoFish. Um, and then uh, we'll, we'll see what that looks like in a minute. But um, once you paste in the HTML code, when you scroll down a little bit in the screen, there's a couple of key things you want to make sure you tick as well. Um, hmm. And it, it's nice because GoFish kind of makes you really make absolute sure that you want to capture data and potentially passwords. So you do want to tick the box for capturing the data. So you you can have it where people just, you know, I, I guess you could have it where they type in username and password. You would see something in your log that they did submit data, but then you don't actually save it on the GoFish server. Mm -hmm. But um, because I'm my campaigns are usually set up to, I want to capture credentials and then go off and try to abuse them. I Damn. do tick the boxes for submit data, capture submitted data, capture passwords, and then they give you a nice warning too that you know right now we're just op our site would be operating over port 80, so that's bad, right? Because then someone sniffing the wire could get those creds. Yeah. But we're gonna we're gonna fix that, and then the 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 sip. I think the simplest and most beautifulest part is this uh, last field for a redirect. So what this is 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 where do you um, want to point the client once they've submitted something to the form? Okay, so you probably see where I'm going nice. with this. Yeah, that's what good. I what I want to do is fish people with SharePoint.7ms.io and say, yeah, you know, we got a new awesome SharePoint server. Just go there and log in, and you'll be good to go. So I want them to go there, type in their username, type in their password, capture that. But then when the page refreshes, I want it to look exactly the same and not have them realize that they are now on the legit. SharePoint.7ms.us yep. because That's that good. way they're not they're not apt to go oh guys guys I think I just clicked on something um, I want them to think oh I must have fat fingered the password okay there yeah and then they go on again yeah now I'm in and 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 uh, just so I don't forget to tell you my favorite oh you're you're excited look at you I <laughs> <laughs> I think my favorite thing is when when I do a campaign like this and I'll say something like We've got a brand new, faster uh, SharePoint server with more disk space and uh, more yeah. features. You know, log in and then let me know what you think. And so people will, um, you know, they'll they'll hit my portal, right? They'll give me their creds. They end up logging into their existing SharePoint, which isn't any different than it was yesterday. <laughs> and then yeah. they'll write back to fake Brian, me, and say, well, a couple things uh, I don't like about the new uh, portal. The color scheme isn't uh, pleasing to my eyeballs, and uh, it actually doesn't seem to be loading. And they tell me, they'll they'll tell me some things that that are legit, but many things that are no different because nothing's actually changed, right? Like I'm, it's totally yeah, impressed. yeah. They'll tell me the fonts are smaller and the paragraphs are more narrow, and they liked it better when ba ba ba. And I think no, nothing's nothing's changed. Oh, that's good. Um, tell me more. Tell me no, more, friend. You yeah. You tell, if you yeah, give your credential. Well, actually, I guess I already yeah. have the credentials. Um, so, uh, so okay, so we got we got really almost everything set up, but security is a concern. We don't, I would highly recommend, don't leave your uh, site on, you know, port 80. Lock it down with a true uh, cert, and thanks to Let's Encrypt, uh, you can do that for free. So I'm, I'm linking to this article from Noopy, I guess. I think it's n00py.io. Um, but he's got an awesome walkthrough for doing exactly what we're trying to accomplish, which is, put a Let's Encrypt security cert on our phishing site to protect both the admin portal and people submitting their creds so that that can't be sniffed in in transit. So it's really, uh, his article goes through it step by step. 
but um, the, the, the high points of what you need to accomplish are uh, you pull down the Let's Encrypt uh, cert bot uh, program that, that generates the cert for you. And you run a command similar to what you see highlighted in red at the bottom there. So I'm, I'm basically saying, hey, Let's Encrypt, I would like to request a, secu a security certificate for the following domain, sharepoint.7ms.io. And the way that I'm going to prove to you that I own that domain is by adding a DNS entry into my domain. So what they'll have you do as you walk through this wizard is the following. That, that top uh, box in red says, okay, please put a DNS text record uh, with this name, acmechallenge.sharepoint.7ms.io, with the following value, blah, 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 blah. And so you've got to go into, in my case, Google Domains, and I, and I have to make that text record um, to prove to Let's Encrypt that I own the domain, so I can't use it for malicious purposes, even though some would argue that I am using yeah. it for <laughs> malicious purposes. Now, my, my big warning right here, and I should have put up like a red exclamation point, my big warning right here is that if you don't give that DNS record enough time to propagate and then you press Enter, like the screen says to, mm. if it goes out and checks the DNS record and it's not there, um. it'll start the process over and, and give you a different DNS record to put up there. So uh, if you get to this point where you've made the record they've asked you to make, uh, do something like this. Use, use command line, use um, NS lookup, and I'm setting the type to TXT record. And then I'm looking up acmechallenge.sharepoint.7ms.io. Mm. Boom, it comes back to me with an answer saying, yes, acmechallenge.sharepoint.7ms. Blah, blah, equals text, da, 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 da. That's how you know the DNS change is propagated. It's out there. Now you can hit enter on that terminal, and then the Let's Encrypt wizard will just go, okay, cool, cool, cool. And then you'll see that screen at the bottom saying, great, here's where the you know, certificate files are stored, and you're, you're good to use it and, and secure your interfaces. So um, we take those files that the Let's Encrypt wizard has, have given us, and really, um, we just need to run a couple of uh, commands. And this is all in that, uh, uh, that Noopy um, article. Um, we, uh, uh, we, we Are you going to put this, a link to that in your YouTube video down below in the comments or somewhere you can do that? Yeah, yeah, I will. I will. Would you copy those files out? And then there's a config file, kind of a master config file for GoFish. So you'll, you'll kill your GoFish hmm. uh, running instance. You'll come into this uh, config file that you see on the lower screenshot, and there's just a couple of things to change. So you change the cert path and the key path for your admin interface. Remember, that's the 3333. And then also the listen URL, which is 443, so that we're serving this over HTTPS. Uh, you set the use TLS value to true. And again, for, for both places, you point the cert path and the key path at the Let's Encrypt files. <laughs> yeah, pretty slick, right? This like, looks good, yeah. Yeah, a little config magic, a little copy, copy, and then... Um, come back into uh, fire up go fish again boom it's there and it's lovely HTTPS padlocked glory and uh, you know give it the sniff test and hey well sure enough okay it's valid we're on yeah. um, we're on let's encrypt we can you know we can continue with our uh, with our mayhem so we're kind of down to the last steps uh, one of which is you know getting your, your target victims so GoFish will give you, uh, that's what you see in the top screenshot, is a, um, a format to follow for uh, loading all the users that you're going to send fish to. And you don't, you, don't have to, um, you don't have to populate that position column, but in your email script, you can, you can use those variables to maybe make the emails more personal. You know, so you could say, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, dear Paul, uh, we think your role as you know, variable, right? You know, Got it. Yeah. is really important. We want you to click this to tell us all about your experience. You could do that. So on there is it, it's okay. I see. So you just hit add and you can add a new variable in there. Is that right? Yeah. Sorry. I should, Got it. I should, um, let me just back up real quick because, um, Oh, maybe actually, maybe that's oh, that might be a little. Oh, that's that's ahead of where we are. That's oh, in the next. Got it. All right. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. You teed it up nicely. So the next part where right. you're 
where you're going to write your email that people will actually see. That's where you do things like what's in um, in between the braces here, where the URL is. That's going to be that individual's you uh, phishing URL that is unique to them. But that's where you can also put. Um, they've got a whole list of variables you can put in. So I can call you out by mm. first name, last name. Um, I tend to kind of just like the hello everyone. I don't. Because for me, when I when it's yeah. very when it's very personal, when it starts with "hello, first, middle, last," and it's my full name, I, I write yeah. it. Like, oh, this came off of a, yeah. yeah. This is a, this is a bother. Oh, this totally, is a yeah. Scam. So um, I, I just personally make most of mine as casual as possible, and I and I try to make my uh, emails brief but very juicy and appetizing. So right away, I promise I've got a a, a new SharePoint site that can run a little faster and has more features. And because I found out, and you, you've probably run into this too, Paul, that you could probably be working with a, you know, a customer or a coworker who got a new top-of-the-line computer yesterday. And if you told them today that they, you know, had a, you had a computer that was running faster, if they would just do, oh, I, you know, go stand on their head for a half hour, they would do it before you got done totally. asking them to do that. So I, got, I get their attention with that, and then I say, oh, please log in and give me your feedback. So I'm trying to make them feel warm and fuzzy like... I care whether or not you like or don't like the SharePoint site. And like I told you, people love to tell me about the SharePoint <laughs> site that hasn't changed yeah. in years. And then uh, the, the cherry on top is uh, whoever sends me feedback will get in a drawing for a $25 gift card. So this, this is me. This is kind of all my favorite tricks in one email in three, three sentences. Um, you know, I think a good share of people, they're, they're foaming at the mouth at this point. They want to, they want to, air their grievances about their cruddy SharePoint site and they want to win money potentially <laughs> while doing it. So, um, so then, we, then I just say, you know, here it is. Boom. There's the URL. And again, remember when people get these, they're coming from my legit G suite, uh, account. So if you reply to it, it's going to reply right to me, fake, fake Brian. Um, no. so I, I, I paste that into our uh, script there and then I make sure to tick the box for ad tracking image. So what's kind of nice about that is once you get to see the, the dashboard where um, all your emails are going out and you see what people are doing with the phishing emails, you can at least, you know, depending on how their outlook or whatever is configured, um, often you can at least track to see who's opened it because that tracking image gets loaded when they open the email. So you can kind of see if it's getting to people, if it's getting in front of eyeballs, and then beyond that, you'll be able to click who clicked and or who um, submitted credentials. Nice. <clears throat> so I usually do one more um, as I get the, the, the last camp campaign screen going. Uh, you know, I, I give everything one more uh, once over. I make sure I've got my URL typed in right. You know, make sure, make sure. I mean, if you have a typo here, nothing's going to work, right? Because all the unique URLs are going to be busted. Yeah. Um, and uh, you, so, I, so I picked my landing page. I picked, I've, uh, uh, at this last screen, you just, you know, all your, Individual selections will have been saved, so it's just a lot of drop-down boxes. So I'm using the template called New SharePoint Site, the landing page that I called LOL Landing Page. There's the URL. Uh, launch date, you can set that into the future if you want. So you queue this up, and you know whenever you and the client agree is a good time to have these start trickling out. Great. Um, the sending profile is me, totally not Brian. And then I made a group called uh, 7MS Fresh Fish. That's who it's going to. Uh, and then um, I, I usually will send myself, uh, uh, you know, one, one more test message and, and uh, my link will look something like the one on the left there. Hmm. So there's the uh, RID equals, you know, preview. It's kind of in saying it's in preview mode. But I see. Everybody gets a unique URL. I go and I type in my creds and I watch to I make see. sure it redirects properly to the, the legit site. And then uh, we're, we're, we're ready to launch. Now, one important thing to point out just bringing this full circle this whole network config thing is at this point you just want to make a couple tweaks to your amazon firewall rules so uh as far as http you now can change that to all zeros slash zero to say anybody and their mom can mm. visit my site on port 80 even though really we are directing people to all https still i don't think it hurts to leave that open and then uh, do the same for 443 so they can see the uh, secured version of your site and then leave 22 and 3333 just to you. Um, Cause I, I have not personally verified this, but an, another, uh, another pen, t pen tester I worked with on another state said 
they watched their their go fish server um they they left a d twenty two three 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 four four three they properly secured everything but they left it open to kind of um you know anybody to hit and they were seeing um they were seeing uh you know hits specifically for a handful of ports um and and looking for three 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 as well so i don't i can't confirm this but my my tinfoil hat brain goes oh i bet some of these like perimeter control services um, can maybe classify a site as phishing if they see mm. 22, 3333, and 443 open. You know, oh, yeah. saying, oh, 3333 shouldn't be open on a just regular run of the mill website. I'm going to flag that as suspicious or whatever. So, um, again, that's more conspiracy theory than anything else. So I, but I still think, in general, why have people knocking at your port 22 and 3333 door? Um, yeah. Besides you, so. Well, you know, I could see other people just scanning other uh, hackers. You know, like real bad guys just scanning those ports just to try to get misconfigured or default passwords in there, right? I mean. Oh, sure. Yeah. I I would I would yeah. start scanning that. You're like, oh, what oh, kind of password gosh. can I get? You know. And if I've got if I'm capturing passwords of C level people for the organizations I'm targeting, yeah, right there. That's, yeah. You said it. You said it best. You you just wouldn't want to leave either of these admin ports open. Um. All right. So at that point. Uh, once hey, real quick. Yeah. Did you show? Did I miss that or space out? Did I on um, how you load the uh, email addresses? Is there oh, a yeah, bulk yeah. CSV? Yep, yep. That's here. So, so they give you a they'll give you a sample uh, CSV. Oh, that's part right. So then, yeah, you'd have to have your um, contact do like an export out of AD or something or exchange or something like that. Yep. And then once you load them all in, you can um, add individuals uh, up here uh, where it says Brian Johnson is a guy. Um, and then they, they, okay, got they it. populate below. Yeah. Got it. All right. Yep. So you get in there, you'll hit launch. And then, and then this is when it's really fun because it kicks over into this dashboard and, um, it refreshes automatically, uh, live. So it's sort of like this, um, you know, breaking news. Uh, you'll start to see, you know, email <laughs> open goes up to one, goes up to two clicked links. You know, when that starts wow. to go up, you know, you, get all giggity and then uh <laughs> ideally what you want to see is this fella here you want to see submitted data you want to see that number start start <laughs> crawling up because that means that means people have uh you know submitted data to your username and password field and uh i've learned to curb my excitement a little bit because sometimes people like to put creative colorful not safe for work <laughs> messages in there oh nice telling me you know where to place objects as as if they they found they know you're a bad guy or yes. they just know you're the IT guy and they hate the IT guy they um they know that it's they they maybe don't know that it's me as 7ms you know working with their IT or security head but they 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 figure it's spam and they're just kind of or uh, you know attackers and they're going to tell them to blank off but then you, got it. you know when i meet then with the company leader later and say you know, we need to tell these people, though, still, the thing is, you clicked the link that could have been attached yeah. to malware, crypto, you know, yeah. ransomware. You still kind of lost. I mean, you you didn't, <laughs> but you didn't, you know, to tell me off. Or you to clicked tell the link, off. exactly. Also, yeah. not a good I, I mean, not a good idea to kind of taunt them anyway. I mean, right? Isn't that just a general rule? Oh, right? yeah, yeah. Yeah, no. Whether you're on the playground with uh, somebody larger than you or just online, I mean, why why poke the bear? Um, yeah. so, uh, but anyway, yeah, you see that, that, uh, that number start to tick up and then, uh, you see here on the list, Brian and Tommy boy, they both submitted data so you can click into one of them. So in this case, we'll click into Tommy boy. And then this is really slick because, um, you get the full timeline of their phishing hmm. narrative. So the email was sent February 14th at 449. Uh, Tommy clicked on it from Chrome at 451. And he submitted data at 452, and then you can uh, break that out and see. Uh, there, there he is. There's his password. Uh, is uh, <laughs> I love cow tipping, and then, you know, that's when, as a as a pen tester, that's when, you know, the fun really starts because if they've got a VPN portal open, if they've got some other service, without multi-factor, I turn right around, you know, try to VPN in if I can, and and if it's in scope. Obviously, right? Um, does, it, does it show? Can you see where their um, what do you call their IP address, where they came in, or where they 
does it capture IP address? Um, yes, it does, and I I just don't think it was in this particular okay. view. But um, yeah, yep. So if they pull, you can kind of see who maybe pulled it up on their phone, or if they're all in the office on the Wi-Fi or whatever. But um, you know, it's okay. really, it's it's just it's so it's so cool, and hopefully, yeah. you know, we demonstrated it's not. You know, there is some. Uh, I would say after my first one, it felt more like riding a bike after that, where it's like, okay, I kind of get the rhythm of this yeah. now. And this that's part of the reason I wanted to do this, really, though, selfishly, is to document it for myself. So when I miss <laughs> the uh, Google Apps steps or miss the yeah. how to get the SSL cert on, I, I don't uh, do it wrong next time. Um, no, I think this looks good. I think it's uh, fun, just like anything, if you're into this kind of building your own servers or, you know, just like uh, way back when you used to wipe out your uh, Windows XP every six months, right? It feels good, nice, you build it yourself. I think doing this is pretty nice, something you create yourself. Um, yeah, it looks really nice, too. The, uh, the uh, what was it, Fish? What was the name, Go Fish? Go, go Fish, yeah. Yeah, uh, they did a really good job. Yeah, they did, they did. And I'm going to, I... I should have looked it up ahead of time. I'm going to go and um, see if they've got a Patreon or a SoundCloud or something. Cause, yeah. Man, I've just pretty much been using this ever since. It was, uh, like I said, it was Joe who turned me on to it when I was trying to get a campaign together. And, you know, I think there's um, Social Engineering Toolkit. There's a couple other ones out there. And then there's plenty of commercial services. But I really like kind of running it myself. Um, this is oh. like just enough manual effort for me to want to use something uh like this but uh, yeah yeah let's let's turn that that's all i've got let's turn to if we got questions discussion anything